if we can't find the stream. Shouldn't be too far away. There it is there. Uh, yeah, audio is working, streams up, chats up, are all good to go. That is fantastic. Oh, shouldn't take too long, folks. We're only waiting on one more driver. Attendance isn't great again, but I'm not terribly surprised. Uh, yeah, we'll be getting underway in just a couple minutes time. But, um, hello everyone and welcome to round 5 of the Formula 2 Sprint Series here on RaceBec Esports. I'm Lane Everingham, your commentator for this event. And for race 9 of the championship, we'll be competing, as you can see, at the legendary Circuit de Monaco. One of the all-time greatest racetracks in the world of motorsport. The 3.37km 19-turn circuit is easily the most difficult challenge on the calendar. It's a circuit where it's almost impossible, even in these Formula 2 machines, to overtake. Which means that this is, without a doubt, the most important one-shot qualifying round of the season. Qualifying will quite literally determine everything. There is a single DRS zone that the drivers can take advantage of. That's down the main straight, heading towards the iconic first turn, that is Saint Devot. Other than that, though, there's really no other opportunities. You can try and send it into the turn 10 and 11 chicane, that is the Nouvelle chicane. Maybe into the hairpin of Raskas at turn 18. But really, yeah, you can't pass. It's Monaco. Everybody knows that. So qualifying is very, very, very important. 15 lap race as well. It'll be the most laps we do of any circuit on the schedule. So there's plenty of time for the drivers to make a mistake during the race and potentially retire themselves out of the first event. But there should be a fairly interesting qualifying seeing some of the top drivers really push hard around the streets of Monaco. And a car that doesn't really have a lot of downforce. As we've seen over the course of this season, these cars are incredibly understeery. So, how understeery are they going to be around Monaco? It's not a fun experience, I can tell you, having a car that doesn't have a front end whatsoever around this circuit. So, it's, it's a very painful experience. Well, I suppose we'll get to find out how the drivers will fare in about 30 seconds time. We'll get one shot qualifying on the way. And yeah, as I suspected, only 12 cars for this round of the championship. Disappointing, unsurprising. Best two words I can use to describe that. Alright, let's get this underway. One shot quality. See, it's slightly overcast in this picture. I wonder. Well, not slightly overcast. Slightly, um, slightly sunsetty. Wonder how far down the sun sets for qualifying here at Monaco. Yeah, it's a bit late in the afternoon. Still plenty of light around. That's the main thing. Uh, drivers won't be able to change much when it comes to setup. I imagine they'll be using the Pirelli Super Soft tyre as well for this event. Typically speaking, this track uses the softest of the compounds available. So I imagine they're going to be using Super Soft tyres. Alright, let's get on with it. One shot qualifying begins. We're on board with Spicy Salami. Fantastic. Get up to telemetry and lap data and the track map. Give you a tour of this legendary 33 kilometer racetrack. Up over Revalge, heading out of saint Devoc Turn 1. We'll head into the left-hander of Turn 3, Massenet. Fourth gear, back on the power as we head into Casino Square. Turn 4, down the hill towards um, Mirabeau. The first of the two Mirabeau corners as Deputy gets disqualified from the session. Around the famous hairpin, that is Turn 6. Around the second Mirabeau. And down into Portier, turn 8. It's important that you get a nice exit out of that 90 degree right-hander so you can maximise top speed 
through the tunnel and heading up towards the Nouvelle Chicane. Turns 10 and 11 on the racetrack. Down to third gear, flobbering over the inside curb at 11. We'll now head towards to back. Turn 12, one of the most notorious corners on the circuit. Spicy gets a pretty spot on though. Through the Louis Chiron chicane and then the swimming pool chicane. Turns 15 and 16 on the racetrack. Round turn 17 and into the hairpin. That is La Rascas. Turn 18 and up towards Anthony Nogues. The final corner on the racetrack. Turn 19. DRS open. Flying down the main straight away. It'll be Spicy Salami who qualifies on pole by a decent margin as well. By about three and a half tenths of a second to Matt Plevy in P2. As Prezo has joined the session, a bit late, but he's here. He might miss race one as a result. Oh no, he's, he qualified, so he must have dipped in. Okay, interesting. Well, his car qualified, he's P6. At the top of the board, it's Spicy Salami, followed by Matt Clevy in P2. Forty and Desti will make up the second row, followed by Bags Liddell. Prezo P6, followed by Banana Cake Pie and Shark, uh, Shark 772. P8, 7 seconds off. Four drivers disqualifying themselves. Deputy, Snickers Bud, Reese Cohen and Roscoe Arm will all be starting at the back of the field in 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th position. No, a pretty tidy lap from Spicy. Couldn't really pick up on any mistakes whatsoever from the VAR driver. It's a crucial qualifying performance, especially when you take into consideration the championship standings. Destio leads the way on 184 points. He is 21 in front of Spicy, who is on 163. Realistically, the fight for the championship is a two-horse race. Plebs in P3 is a bit too far behind. He's on 128. He's 35 behind Spicy and 56 behind Destio. Reese Cohen is P4 on 109, and rounding out the top 5 is Bags Liddell on 99 points. So realistically, it's a two-horse race for the championship between Destiel and Spicy. No rain on the racetrack at the moment, but there is a bit of a grey filter over the racetrack, so it might be a tad bit overcast. We'll see in a few moments as the drivers set off on their formation lab. As... well, oh, that's pretty predictable. Everyone's on the same tire. Um, this is a glitch where the, the driver isn't allowed to customize strategy at all um, in these Formula 2 races for some reason. So everyone starts on the same tire. It is slightly overcast here at Monaco, so we might get some wet weather interference. I suppose only time will tell. But yeah, everyone on the soft tires, it means that there's no differing when it comes to strategy other than someone attempting an overcut and an undercut. That's about it. Not much to discuss other than that. To be totally honest, everyone's on the same time going through the championship standings. Just sit and wait patiently for the cars to make their way round. Get ready for the start of this race. You know, it's properly, properly overcast, I must say. Will we get some wet weather interference? I must say, I do like these new camera angles, Codemasters. I've noticed this. These are pretty good. They're much more uh, accurate to the real-life camera angles used around the circuit. I'm quite appreciative of it. Heading on to the main straightaway now. Now, Spicy will have the inside line heading towards Santa Vod, but if Matt Plevs gets a better start, he can try and swoop around the long way, but he, he really needs a mega start, and he really needs Spicy to have quite a poor one if he wants any hope of taking the lead out of turn one, as Destiel completely misses his box. He's parked up there. What... Will he, re will he be reset? What's going on? Has he broken the formation lap? What's going on?
Wait, what are you doing? Just drove by everything and he's parked up at turn one. So what, is he doing another... Oh, for God's sake. What the hell is this? Well, you would have thought he'd be completely reset. But no, he's being allowed to do another lap. What? I oh, for crying out loud. Oh, anyway, I guess we have to wait even more. Jesus Christ. Honestly, you, you'd think the game just reset him, but no. Let's go all the way around, and these guys just stranded on the grid. Hopefully they don't get cold tyres from that, too. Because if they do, that's, that's proper rubbish, if they do. now back onto the main straight. The police just line up. Oh my god. What the hell? What? Oh. Awesome. Just plain awesome. What the hell is going on? This game is just straight, straight, straight awesome. Codemasters, you made a freaking masterpiece. Top quality stuff right here. What is this? Red flag has been declared. So what are we doing? We're gonna we're gonna waste time on this stuff or what? Well, it seems that. Yeah. What are we doing? Are we just... I'm guessing we're just canning it. Yeah, this is an AI behind the wheel. Alright. I'm just leaving. Honest to God. This game is top quality. Honestly, racing game of the year. Right here. Goodness sake. Could not have made a bigger pile of horse crap honestly well, here we are we got away right away bags will be setting up the lobby Getting it all nice and ready. Meanwhile, I have to ramble on about some random bullshit for five minutes. Frankly, I don't know what to talk about. Other than the fact that this game is a waste of just about everybody's time. Honestly, it's a joke. Truth be told, I probably should be madder. But I'm honestly not surprised anymore. I just don't. 
been playing this for too damn long and know damn well that this is just typical crap that you get from Codemasters. Bugs galore, resets galore. Just not freaking fun. And on top of that, the terrible game direction that this has. Absolutely terrible. Trying to push shit that uh, allows for microtransactions within the game. So blatant, so deliberate. takes away from the gameplay experience and on top of that the issues we have in multiplayer as well as the single player experience it's not fun not even a little bit man This race better be damn good then. Waited long enough for him. Decided to turn off formation lap. Fair enough. That should prevent that from happening again. The grid's been set based off the results from qualifying. So as soon as the lights come on, it'll be lights out and away we go. Won't be any pause. There won't be any intermediate lap to prepare for. It's just go. Let's get on with it. Monaco. As frustrating as this track gets. And on top, the delays we've had. Drivers aren't probably in a great mood. I, I'm certainly not. Now the conditions were custom set to be overcast. Judging by all of the pit stalls, everybody will be starting on the soft tyre. Just like the formation lap before. No one will be starting on the super soft tyre because the game won't allow you to customise your strategy. Because it's that good. No sarcasm in that whatsoever. All 12 cars are lined up, ready to run. We have five red lights. And we're underway. Here in Monte Carlo, it's a nice start from Spicy and from Matt. They'll lead the field down into saint Devot, then up Beau Rivage towards Massonet. It's a tidy start from the top three. A bit of shuffling towards the back of the field as they head towards Massonet, turn three top four already starting to break away there's half a second between Destiel and Bags Liddell down the hill after Casino Square into the Mirabeau hairpin breaking hard Prezzo getting close to his Red Bull brethren there but thankfully no contact contact there though between what I believe was a dam so probably shark and banana cake pie perhaps no it would have been 
Reese Cullen going into the back of Shark, rather. Got my logos confused. Reese on the attack, and then the Sony Mobile bombs it down the inside here at Nouvelle. Gets it done. Overtakes Shark, he's into P8. Camera zooms out, you can see all the expensive yachts that no one can buy. The cars whizzing their way towards the swimming pool chicane. There's battling going on here. Prezzo looking around the outside. Bags covers the inside line well, but almost puts himself into the wall at the exit of Raskas. It's Spicy who maintains the lead. Half a second over Matt Plevy in P2. Out of Santa Vot. Up Beau Rivage towards Massonet. The gap is two and a half tenths between 40 and Matt. Can he find a way past, perhaps, at the Mirabeau hairpin? Down the hill. No, not close enough. They were near close enough. Snickers Bud overtaking Debbie. Contact between Bags and Prezzo there. Thankfully, though, Bags was able to keep control of his car. I'm sensing there might be a chance to overtake for Reese Cohen. Certainly the aggressive type, he won't be mucking around. Hasn't got enough traction though out of Portier to attack here into the Novel chicane. He'll stay behind in P8. Third gear through the chicane, hits the back of Banana. We head towards Tabak now, turn 12 on the racetrack. Chucking it through fourth gear, big understeer with the Dams Mobile. Prezzo gets a three second time penalty for multiple warnings, clobbering over the chicane towards La Rasse Cass. Banana understeers wide, Reese is all over the back of him as we head through Anthony Nogues and onto the main straight. Up through the gears, Banana moves to the side, he doesn't want to battle Reese it seems, and as a result Cohen's given a free position. He's up to P7. 40 getting mega runs out of Santa Vot. He's unable to get himself in a position where he can attack Matt Plevy. Had a brief look to the inside here into the Mirabeau hairpin, but he did not fully commit. As we head around the hairpin. Oh, Prezzo in the wall. Big time. Front wing damage on that Carlin. He'll have to pit and get that fixed. That's a shame. Qualified pretty well. That's ultimately ruined his race. Top four is still pretty well bunched up at the moment. Just going to be so, so difficult to try and make moves. Chucking it through to back. Then through the Louis Chiron chicane, one of the best camera angles in all of motorsport. That still camera angle heading through that chicane. It's absolutely epic, even with these Formula 2 cars. Deputy gets by Shark, that's for P10. Tidy move there at to back. Lap 4 of 15 begins. Spicy still leads by four and a half tenths to Matt Plevy. Prezzo pits in. He's going to put on the super soft tyre and replace his front wing. It's going to be a lengthy stop. One advantage he does get though is a lot of clear air. He'll be able to put the hammer down, try and make the best of it. Round the outside, looks Roscoe arm. He moves through into P10. Tidy overtake there. Top four, still bunched up. There's Bags Liddell in P5. Behind him is his teammate, Reese Cohen, in P6. Through the tunnel. Not exactly the most glamorous engines in the world, but they do the job. Through the Nouvelle Chicane. Up towards Tabac. Spicy just needs to keep it out of the barriers. Victory should be his even by this point. The only thing that could probably upset him is a uh, difference in strategy. Perhaps someone trying to do a massive undercut. No one undercutting just yet. Probably well, well too early to attempt an undercut. Round turn one. Up the hill. Reese Cohen, new fastest lap, 
5-9. He's hunting out, down his teammate Bags Liddell. In fact, he's right on him at the moment. Asani Mobile closing in. Oh, and he's bonked the wall inside of Casino Square. Around the hairpin at Mirabeau, down the hill towards the hairpin. Nice and easy on the power through the second Mirabeau. Now through Portier. Bags pulling away, perhaps. Reese got some damage on the front wing after a shunt in the wall. Wouldn't be terribly surprised. Here's your top four still. Spicy, Matt Plevy, Forty and Destiel. Spicy's put the hammer down a little bit. Pulled away ever so slightly. Clawing over the curbs. Touring car style there from Forty. Round Larascas. Up the hill towards Anthony Nose. That's a big undercut from Destiel. Lap five, he's in. Ties are ready to go. Up goes the car. On go the super softs. Away he leaves. No adjustments from what I could see. Through Casino Square come the leaders. Wonder how effective that undercart will be. Ultimately time will tell. Reese Cohen. Close. Not close enough to attack here into the first Mirabeau. Through the famous hairpin. The slowest corner on the racetrack. Locking the left front there was Reese Cohen. That's how hard he was turning into the corner. Snickers barred. Destiel Snickers barred running wide. Not sure if he was eight. And then, oh, deputy forced into the wall. Snickers barred all over the place here. Side by side through the second Mirabeau and through goes Deputy Dildog. It was very clumsy stuff, but they managed to get through relatively unscathed. And through the tunnel and towards the Nouvelle Chicane. Spicy N40 pit. Matt stays out. He's attempting the overcut. Super Soft's at the ready. The former race leader. And there you go. Way leaves. Keep an eye on that white dot. That's Destiel making his way onto the main straight. Couldn't quite catch him at the corner of the screen, but he is coming. Coming at a fairly rapid rate. But no matter. Destiel did not pass. It's 40 all spicy, though he's having a go. Down the inside into Massonet of all places and he gets in front 40 had to lift there you could hear it big lift right at the exit of Massonet letting Destiel through who overshoots the Mirabeau hairpin or oh, 40 in compensation lights it up at the exit of the hairpin spicy looking all right so 1.2 seconds back to Destiel does Matt do? How long will he stay out on these soft tyres? It's coming in now. And stay out on them for long. Keep an eye on that brown dot making its way through the swimming pool complex. Reese Cohen will take the lead. He's yet to stop. Super soft tyres now on the car. Way he leaves. Spicy, Destiel and Forty making their way onto the main straight. Matt Plevs comes out of pit lane. Here come the leaders. And slot himself in third place, it seems. So Destiel has jumped up two positions. He's hunting down Spicy Salami. So that undercut has worked quite well. Jumping up from fourth in the queue to second. Bit of a gap as well between Matt and Destiel. 1.2 seconds is a gap. 40 all over the back end of the MP Motorsport car. 
As you can see, just about everyone's made at least one stop, minus Roscoe Arm and Reese Cohen. They'll make a pit stop at some point. Perhaps Reese will go out long enough and pray for a VSC, or well, actually, no, he needs a safety car. Mandatory pit stop won't count in a VSC. Will he pit in? Looks like he is. Round Larascas, up the hill towards Antony Nogues. Sector 1 yellows at Shark. Making a mistake at Casino Square. Roscoe Armour, three second time penalty, multiple warnings. Spicy, back in the race lead. Destiel P2, followed by Matt Plevy. Then 40, who is right behind? Reese comes out, P5. Well in front of Banana Cake Pie, who is in front of Bags Liddell. So we've got a bit of a battle on for P6 on track. Prezzo moves all the way up to 8th position. A nice recovery after what happened earlier in the race. So long as his tyres can remain inflated. Be a decent finish. He does have a penalty though. 3 seconds next to his name. I think with a gap that he's got, the only thing he has to worry about is his tyres remaining inflated. If he gets a puncture, it's pretty much game over. 40, losing a bit of ground on Matt Plevy. Destiel in P2. Oh, a bit sideways there. Coming through turn 14. Round the happen. Round Anthony Nogues. DRS open on the main straightaway. Spicy Salami, new fastest lap, 21.505. Safety two yellows, Ross goes out. He's crashed at a Nouvelle chicane. No safety car, even though that car is right in the middle of the circuit. We got nothing. Completely damaged front wing on the Snickers Bud Mobile too. Or half broken front wing, I should say. Reese Cohen, penalty next to his name. Three seconds have been added on. Here's your race leader. Spicy Salami. 1.1 seconds is the gap. Out of Portier and through the tunnel. The gap increases to 1.2. So it seems that Spicy has the measure over Destiel right now. In fact, the top four are properly starting to spread out. 40, yeah, rub some, oh, and he loses control, he's backwards, full 180 there at the exit of the Nouvelle Chicane, I believe he just lit it up, spun the car around, here comes Reese Cohen, now both of these drivers have a time penalty next to their name, so this is a genuine battle for position, oh, and Reese is pushing hard, brushing the barrier at the exit of the swimming pool chicane. Around Anthony Nogues, onto the main straight. Four and a half, half a second is the gap between Forty and Reese. Round turn one. Up the hill. A bow rivage towards Massano. Round turn four. Down the hill, or oh, a bit sideways there from Reese. He's giving it some shark three second time penalty. Most multiple warnings. No send from Reese here. Staying behind for the moment. Meanwhile, out in front, one second is the gap between Spicy and Destiel. Spicy managing the gap well. Matt not doing himself any favours. A three second time penalty next to his name. Essentially taking him out of the battle for the win. Round to back. Through the Louis Chiron chicane. Then the swimming pool chicane. Oh, again brushing the barrier. Really giving it some. Banana cake pie under some pressure too. As Prezzo gets a tying penalty which really puts him under threat 
to lose P8, the overall result. It's not that he'd really mind that, to be honest. It'll push him further forward for the second race of this round of the championship. Reese again close. 40 a tad bit wide, but he gets a very nice exit. So does Reese, to be fair. Not the best of runs, though, through Casino Square. Getting right up close to that trident. Reese is pushing hard. Very tidy through the hairpin. Round the second Mirabeau and down into Portier. Oh, a bit sideways there from 40 on the exit. Costing him a little bit of time. But he should have margin in hand to hang on to P4 heading down into the Nouvelle Chicane. And he does hang on. Meanwhile, this battle for P6 still ongoing. Three and a half tens is the gap between Banana and Bags. Can Bags find a way through? No, is the answer. Not here anyway, at the Nouvelle Chicane. Three laps to go here at Monaco. Spicy, Destiol, Matt Plevy. One and a half seconds separating the top three as they head up Beau Rivage. 40 and Reese Cohen crossing the line now, making their way round Saint Devot. Six tenths of a second is the gap between these two cars. And just behind me have Banana Cake Pie and Bags Liddell. Three and a half tenths is the gap. They head through Saint Devot. Bags slightly overshoots, almost puts it in the wall. Got very close to the barrier there. Not too far behind to do anything though. Deputy overtakes Prezzo, who's actually elected to pit. That's a smart thing to do. As Reese has left the session. Oh, dearie me. It was like last week in Portugal. He DCs. His opportunity to fight for fourth is gone. The AI will drag him back quite a long way. Prezzo comes out in P10, and P10 is where he'll stay. It means he will give himself pole position for the second race later tonight. Meanwhile, Destiol has given himself a three-second time penalty. It means now that Spicy, all he needs to do is keep within the white lines. Doesn't really matter what Destiol does from here on out. Spicy has got the win in the bag. So long as he stays out of the barriers and doesn't get a penalty himself. Round Massonet. Turn three, then Casino Square. Turn four. Reese has rejoined the session. Down the hill into the first Mirabeau. Pulling away ever so slightly. Nine tenths the gap between the top two. Behind Banana Cake Pie and Bags Liddell. Big understeer from Banana. Bags closes in up the hill. Banana cuts him off. Into turn three. Bags a bit of understeer, losing a little bit of ground to Banana, just a little. Down the hill, towards the Mirabeau hairpin. Bags has a look, but couldn't fully commit. Oh, Banana overshoots the hairpin, ever so slightly. A little bit of contact as well through the hairpin. Down the hill, towards the second Mirabeau. Banana somehow hangs on to P6. Up towards the Nouvelle Chicane. Bag senses an opportunity here. Banana knows it and covers. Doesn't cover enough though. Bags down the inside. Slight contact, very slight. Banana keeps the position. It's good enough driving from the pair of them. Keep it out of the barriers and keep contact to an absolute minimum. Through the second chicane, Bags not the best of runs. Banana pulls away. Matt Plevy closing in on Destiel. This is the final lap of the race. Matt, he can battle for position here. If he can find a way through, it would be very, very tough, though, around a circuit like this. I think he might as well settle for P3, unless he can think of some sort of miraculous dive bomb at some part of the racetrack. There's your race leader. Here's P2 and 3. Matt too far back. Brakes late. But uh, they're still a bit too far out of front. Bit of wheel spin as well. They'll hold him back. 
There's a few more corners to go for Spicy Salami. Was good enough to put on pole by a decent margin as well. Kept it pretty well out of the barriers too. Guides around Laras Cass for the final time. Now around the final corner and back onto the main straightaway. An important win in the context of the championship. Spicy wins here in Monte Carlo. They're still home in P2. Plev's home in P3. 40. It appears he'll hang on to P4 here. Oh, <laughs> Reese gave it a proper go. Tried to have a dive bomb down the inside. At uh, Entity Nogues. Ultimately didn't work out. Those two are mates. So they're just playing around. Same with these two. I say mates. They know each other. <laughs> Banana and Bags. Around turn 19. Onto the main straight. And Banana will hang on to P6. Well done, Banana. Bags P7. Deputy will come home in P8. Some nice points for himself in VAR. Now, Prezzo, with nine seconds worth of penalties, you should be pretty well set for P10 here in Monte Carlo. He is properly revving it out. I'm thinking he's trying to slow himself down to make sure that he's going to finish in P10. So a bit of tactics there from Prezzo. Not too much of a surprise. Shark will head on to the main straightaway. He will finish in P11. Our final finisher of the event with Roscoe Arm retiring. There we are. Reese Cohen given driver of the day as he leads the section again. Here we may. But here are your top three. Spicy Salami, your race winner here in Monte Carlo. Destiel home in P2 with Matt Plevy completing the pl podium places in third. So the unofficial results of round seven of the Formula 2 Sprint Series. Spicy is your race winner with fastest lap as well. A full complement of points. Pretty solid effort from the VAR driver. Pole position, fastest lap and race win. Not bad at all. Destiel home in P2. Plevy in third, followed by 40 in fourth. Reese Cohen P5. Then Banana Cake Pie. Bags of Dell in P7. And then Deputy Dildog. Snickers Bar Prezzo. P10, he will start from pole position for race 8 of the series. Shark outside of the 10 in P11. Roscoe Arm crashing out at the new Chicane. will start from the very back in 12th position. Now, where is race 8 exactly? Well, we don't have to go far from Monte Carlo. We are going to Le Castellet. Yes, circuit... Paul Ricard. Another one of the quote-unquote legacy racetracks featured in F1 23. The 5.84 kilometer 15 turn circuit features two DRS zones. One that heads down the pit straight down into turn one and the other leads down the Mistral straight into the turn eight nine chicane. And that's easily the best overtaking spot on the circuit. We'll see just about every overtake happen into that Mistral chicane. Everywhere also, yeah, you'll be pretty hard-pressed to see some overtaking. Might see a little bit into turn one, as I mentioned. You might see a little bit into turn three as well. I have seen an overtake or two um, happen into that corner. Maybe even into the long right-hand sweeper of turn 11, one of my favourite corners in all of Formula 1, I think it's a fantastic corner. But other than that, yeah, there won't be much passing around this circuit. Hopefully it won't take us too long to ready up. We've already spent enough time waiting, thanks to what happened at Monaco. Well, 
Just be waiting patiently. Mr. Excuse me, Mr. Liddell will be setting up the grid as I speak. As a matter of fact, I think he's done and he's just uh, clicked the ready up button, so he must be ready to go. In this game one piece of credit, the themes are a lot better in this compared to F122. Much better. Uh, Ian Livingston works really hard on these. He's a fantastic composer. And uh, I think he nailed it on the head with the soundtrack. Or rather, the uh, yeah, the theme soundtrack for this game. Alright. Next race of the championship. Oh. Now, looking at tyres, would they use the super softs here at Paul Ricard? Don't think so. Surely they'd use the. Oh, those look like hards. Oh, it certainly looks like it. Five red lights, no formation lap, we're on the way. Oh no, they are six soft tyres, I think. Prezzo, pretty tidy start. Snickers bud, though, getting the jump, heading down towards turn one. Side by side action, Prezzo, deputy. They are hard tyres. As we exit turn two and heading up towards turn three. Bags, Liddell and Banana Cake Pie side by side. Oh, a little bit sideways there from Banana. Gets it under control though. Some more two wide action behind as Reese and Destiel battle away. Round turn five. Round turn six and then turn seven. Oh, massively running wide there. I think that might have been 40. Can't, couldn't quite tell. Three wide action here. Heading down the Mistral Strait. Towards the chicane. Inside line belongs to Spicy. Bombs it down the inside. It's 40 there at turn 8. Almost got it done too. Shark on the attack. Looking around the outside here. Contact between the two cars. As they return to the Mistral Strait. Heading towards the scene curve. Turn 10. Some more battling here at the back of the pack. We've got some battling going on in the midfield too. As Reese gets by Banana Cake Pie, he moves into P5. Oh, Banana. Very, very close to hitting the back of Reese's car, but he keeps control. Stays in P6. Roscoe, Shark. Oh, Shark forced wide. Roscoe moves into P11. So it's Snickers Bud who leads. Prezzo P2. Follow. Oh, and running wide. I think that might have been Bags Liddell. And the Red Bull sponsor, Dams, is all over the place. He rejoins in seventh position behind both Spicy and Banana Cake Pie. Might lose another position to Matt Plevy if he's not careful. Or oh, someone running awfully wide there. The VAR card, Spicy. Rejoins in front of Matt. Redresses behind Matt, moves down to P8. Oh, massive understeer from the bag, Slidell. Around turn 5, up towards turn 6. 
close, very close from two cars. Meanwhile, out in front, Snickers Bud right on the gearbox of Prezzo's Carlin. Three second penalty to 40 already. Only one and a bit laps in. Snickers Bud down the inside. Prezzo wins the battle though. He outbreaks the Virtuosi of 40. Goes straight on at the chicane. He rejoins with a five second time penalty for corner cutting that he will serve when he makes his only pit stop. Snickers Bud bullied down to P3. Reese Cohen moves to second as they go around turn 11. Banana having a look down the inside of Deputy couldn't make the move stick. Down the inside looks Bags Liddell in the dams. Can't quite get it done. He stays behind Banana. Matt Plevy wants a piece of the action. He's looking around the outside of Bags Liddell through the penultimate corner. You'll have the inside line here at the hairpin. Dives it in. The bags maintain traction and speed around the outside of the final corner. Reese Cohen setting a new fastest lap, 48.905. Through turn one. Round turn two. Up towards turn three quite close enough to do anything just yet. Bags almost goes into the back of Banana. Here comes Matt Plevy around the outside. That will turn into the inside at turn five. Or oh, Plev's not really giving him any room. Gee whiz. Gave him about half a tire width. Spicy. With a lot of help from the slipstream. Trying to battle away. Reese Cohen moves into the race lead. Prezzo tries to keep. Oh, contact, I think, between Reese and Prezzo there at turn nine. They both keep it under control, and Reese takes the lead. That's why she wasn't able to make the move stick on Bags Adele either. Didn't have enough momentum. Round turn 10. Absolutely chucking around this corner. Deputy under pressure. Ba um, banana cake pie right behind. Plev's having a look too. He is really close to this battle. Oh, what the... What kind of line was Deputy taking there? An opportunity for Matt. He bombs it down the inside here at turn 12. A little bit of contact between the two cars. And Matt moves into P4. Banana down to 5th. Deputy all over the back of the Campos car. Can't find a way through. Bags Liddell right behind. Can he find a way through here at the hairpin? Into the pits go Snickers, Bud, Spicy, Salami, and 40. All pitting in quite early. Getting off the hard tyre and onto the soft compound, if I'm not mistaken. It is. Reese Cohen, our race leader. Three tenths of a second is the gap between the top two. Prezzo hunting him down with the help of DRS. Uh, Plevy, P3, Banana Cake Pie, P4. Have a look at the position changes. Reese Cohen up five. Matt Plevy up five. Destiel up two. Roscoe up four. Shark up two. Of course, that's thanks to the pit cycle currently going through. Uh, taking a very different line compared to his competitors. Uh, his rivals were really throwing it out of uh, turn six. Banana much tidier. At the exit of the right-hander. Down the inside looks Destiel on Deputy Dildog. Gets that done pretty easily. He moves to P6. Back onto the Mistral straight. Heading towards the scene curve. Following each other in the slipstream. Incredibly fast corner turn 10. And down into the long sweeper of turn 11. Like I said, I adore this corner. It's a double apex right-hander. It's a very nice corner when you get it absolutely spot on. Thanks, pushing hard to try and find a way through, but he hasn't done it just yet. Any of the leaders coming in? Oh yeah, only Reese coming in. That stays out, Banana stays out. Bags having a look. No, he's all over him. Can't find a way through. Destiel's in as well. Down the main straight. 48.4. New fastest lap. 
And Bags not going for the move. He's going it's a long pit lane. It's a very long pit lane here at Paul Ricard. He leads just in front of Roscoe. Up. Here comes Spicy and Snickers Bud and Forty. Forty, of course, had to serve a five-second time penalty for cutting the Mies Royal Chicane. So he's at the back of this. Got a fair chunk of work to do. These guys have to stretch their soft tyres. Fairly lengthy distance. Should make it. But I wonder how good their tyres will be towards the end of the race. Banana fighting hard with Bags. Bags overshoots. Turn 8. But he covers the inside line well at 9. Bags hangs on to P3. Banana having a go. Back onto the Mistral straight. He'll have the inside line here at the scene curve. Oh, light contact between the two cars there. Stays behind Bags. Bags. Oh, my word. Overshoots turn 11. And Banana Cake Pie moves back on through. Big bomb down the inside there from Bags. But he decides to back out of it. Banana's just too intimidating to pass. As Bags appears to be coming in. Same with Banana. Oh, they don't overshoot. Thought they were going to overshoot then. At 60 kilometer per hour speed limit. It's a long pit lane. There's Prezzo. There's Matt Plevy. The MP car. And Fidel. Soft tyres at the ready. On they go. Way leaves. Slow leave. That's just a glitch thing. He is right behind BCP. Spicy. Second now. Prezzo P3. Oh, this is tight. Stickers bar. Destiel down the inside. Oh, Destiel trying to fight around the outside. He gets it done. Snickers Bud tried hard, but unfortunately it just wasn't quite enough. Yellow's out. I believe that's Bags Liddell. It is. Making a mistake. Oh, and Deputy spun as well at turn two. Dear me, a few drivers spinning out at the second corner. Matt on the back of Snickers Bud. Oh, big understeer there. The RS Open. Yes, you're closing in on Prezzo. Prezzo leaves the inside line open. Destiel gets it done. He moves into P3. Prezzo down to fourth. Snickers Bud in fifth. Matt Plevy behind in P6. Just to get up into sixth gear. How much trouble are they carrying here? 293 kilometers an hour down to 250 at the apex of turn 10. Around turn 11. Down the inside goes Matt Plevy. Moves up into P5. Keep an eye on the battle in front though. Prezzo. Destiel. Three tenths apart. Round turn 14. Fourth gear back on the power. Down to second gear. Oh. Lots of rear locking there. So much so I thought he got a hit in the rear. No, he just locked the rear tyres. Three hundred and five kilometers an hour they reach into turn one. These cars aren't slow. They're just nowhere near the pace of a Formula One car. <laughs> through the opening sector. Prezzo losing a little bit of ground to Destiel. Don't mind that too much. You'll just be hoping to finish in a solid position. Spicy. One second is the gap between him and Reese. He still has DRS down the Mistral straight. That will help him out just a little bit. Gains about half a tenth or so. Reese doesn't do himself any favours. A three second time penalty for multiple warnings. Just shot himself in the foot there. With that mistake. Might take away his chance of winning this race. 
here in Le Castellet. Desil, can he close in on his championship rival? It's a tight fight between Desil and Spicy. 21 points is the gap. It would have been cut down by a little bit thanks to Spicy's win, plus his fastest lap. Desil, he needs to try and get in front of Spicy if he can. He is closing the gap. 1.1 seconds is the margin as Bags Liddell gets a three second time penalty for multiple warnings. Starting to add up. Destiel with it a second now. No DRS just yet. Matt Plevy sets a new fastest lap. 1 minute 45.670. Down towards turn 3. Destiel he'll start to get some DRS assistance. Spicy a bit vulnerable now at the front of this queue with no DRS help. There it is. There's a DRS indicator on the telemetry. It's open now. Get that assistance plus the slipstream from the car in front. Down into turn 8. There's your race leader. Big understeer from Spicy. Destiel following right behind. 40 on the attack. Battling with Snickers Bud. Roscoe on a three second time penalty. 40 can't find a way through just yet. Six gear. Heading towards turn 10. Bit of a lift. Chucks it in. An opportunity. But he decides to back out. Has another look down the inside. Snickers Bud on the stairs. Around the outside now at turn 12. A plenty of grip. And Banana follows suit. That's why he's driving from Banana. Snickers Bud a bit compromised on the inside line there at turn 12. So Banana, he just followed 40 through. Oh, and almost rear-ended him. <laughs> rear him at turn 15. Gee whiz. 40 now defending from Banana. Can BCP attack? He's looking around the outside here into turn 1. 40 defends well. As a result, he hangs on to P6 on track. Meanwhile, look at this four-car train. This is for second place. This is for the win. Unless, of course, Reese can pull out another second and a half, which is possible. There's two and a half laps to go. I'm right on board with Matt Plevy at the back of the queue. He's got a perfect spot to watch all the action happen. Destiel on the racing line. Moves through fairly easily. Prezzo having a look around the outside of turn eight. Can't get it done, though. Oh, it's tight. Very tight. Spicy left him room. And look at that steel driving away. Now Matt has an opportunity to try and pass a pair of them. Round the outside. At turn 10. Gee whiz. Plebs is not mucking around. Gets it done too. P4. Great stuff. Yeah, Spicy in a bit of trouble. Reese, oh my word, it's happened again. Another opportunity to potentially win a race, or at least secure a decent result. Thrown out the window. Disconnecting again. Destiel will inherit the race lead. Spicy's under pressure. Matt looking down the inside here. Down towards turn one. Plevy gets it done. He's into P2. Spicy. Sorry. He's up to P3. Not up to P2 just yet. The time penalties will ultimately sort that out. Brazo's still in this. Though those three seconds next to his name will hold him back in the long run. 40 under pressure still from Banana. This isn't over either. And Banana, well, he's penalty free. So he doesn't necessarily have to battle 40. Too hard if he really doesn't want to. And Spicy, vulnerable to Prezzo here. Down the Mistral straight, towards the chicane. He's looking down the inside. 
Spicy covers hard, moves back slightly towards the racing line. Prezzo fighting around the outside, that turns to the inside. Great overtake from Prezzo. Moves through into P4. Levy closing in on the AI of Reese Cohen. What a tremendous show. Prezzo up into P3 and again penalty next to his name ultimately going to hold him back. Bastille, he's got a clear track in front. Got slightly better tyres compared to Spicy. That's why he was able to close in so quick. But now, can Matt do anything? Matt's got slightly younger tyres compared to Destiel. Can he close in by enough? I have a feeling the answer is probably no. 1.2 seconds, it's a fairly decent size margin. As we begin the final lap here at Circuit Paul Ricard. Yeah, look at that gap. Slightly closing in. Realistically, Plevy needs DRS down the Mistral straight. He needs everything he can get. Try and pressure Destiel. Roscoe, I'm getting by at bags. Liddell, ultimately inconsequential thanks to the time penalty situation. On to the Mistral straight we go. Matt doesn't have DRS. He just misses out. Just. Prezzo closing in. He might have a crack at this. Has a look but doesn't fully commit. Decides to just stay behind. Still though, I think you'd be pretty happy with a P4 finish. After everything has been said and done. Bags Liddell gets back up into P8. Ultimately that is where he... Oh, actually no, he might finish P7 thanks to Fordy's penalties. Brazo having a look, but can't fully committing to a move. Maybe if there was one extra lap, maybe Mac can give it a proper go. Brazo giving it a proper crack here for second place on track. He's alongside, but Matt has the traction. And he's forcing him wide. He's having none of it. Gee whiz. Brazo diving it back down. He wants to finish P2 on track. Matt, oh, he's in front of front of, oh gee whiz, it's very tight between those two. Destiel will take the checkered flag here in La Castellet. Matt Plevy will cross the line in P2, he will stay in P2. Spicy P3, Prezzo finishes off the podium in P4. Banana Cake Pie finishes in the top five. Reese Cohen P6 followed by Bags Adele, 40 in the wall. Snickers Bud P9 followed by Roscoe Arm. Deputy Dildog, and then eventually Shark 772. Yeah, between Matt and Prezzo at the end there, it got it got feisty. There was some fisticuffs going on down the main stretch. <laughs> Need a push, bit of shove. Oh, and all some interesting racing. Now a nice recovery from Destiel. For some points back from Spicy Salami. I think as well he'll probably extend his championship lead as a result. As uh, Mr. Spicy finished third in this race compared to Destiel finishing P2 in Monte Carlo. So, the unofficial results of race 10 of the Formula 2 Sprint Series. Destiel is your race winner. By 1.8 seconds to Matt Plevy in P2. Spicy completing the podium places in P3. Prezzo finishes in 4th place. What well, could have been a podium if it weren't for those 3 seconds worth of penalties next to his name. Banana Cake Pie is penalty free and as a result he finishes 5th. Reese Cohen set for a top five finish, disconnected with about two to go. It meant that he finishes in P6. His teammate Bags Liddell in seventh, followed by 40 in eighth, 
Snickers Bud 9th and Roscoe Arm rounds out the 10. Deputy Dildog P11 and Shark our final finisher in P12. Well, it certainly has been another interesting week here with the Formula 2 sp Sprint Series. A lot of frustrations, and I think everybody shares similar frustrations with this game at the moment. There's just certain bits and bobs of it that aren't really enjoyable, especially on the online perspective. You know, there's certainly elements in the single player where it's a lot more enjoyable, but here... A lot of bugs, a lot of glitches, a lot of frustration. So hopefully we get a nice, clean final round of the championship. But I think with the race finally over, it's time for us to end the stream. I've been Lane Everingham. Thank you everyone so much for watching. And be sure to tune in next week for the final round of the Formula 2 Sprint Series. Until then, it's goodbye.